Now during this build I'm going to be welding with this on the ground but I'm going to be leaving my tank hooked up to my old cart that way it doesn't accidentally fall over. If you're doing this from the ground make sure you tie your tank up to the wall somewhere Now this welder is 10 by 19 inches, but you got to remember about your cables and your gas hose and all that. So on the front, if you're going to be putting a lip around to secure it, you want to make sure it doesn't go any higher than the lowest part here. Also that it doesn't block your door from hinging. And in the back you want to add probably 5 inches, that way your cables don't get pinched from uh, being too close. Now there's a few ways that you can do this that's pretty simple. You can either butt it up like this and leave this open, or you can cap this, butt these together, or you can 45 them and put them together. So if you don't mind having an open one, this is the fastest way, super simple, or like that. And then you can weld a cap on here, that way it's out to the same edge, grind it down, and then butt it like that, or you can 45 it and put it together. The 45s to me are a little quicker than just capping this, uh, but it's a lot longer than just welding it like this. So depends on your preference. It looks um, better in my opinion when it's 45 and then ground off. Once I have all my pieces cut and prepped, I'll clamp them to a piece of scrap metal that's nice and flat. The wider the piece, the better, but I'll use that to keep it on a single plane. And you can actually clamp two pieces if you'd like. This is if you don't have a table. And then I'll knock it around, get it all square, check with the square, tack it, and then I'll check it with the square and make, make sure it stayed nice and true. And then I'll do two sides just like that. And then I'll place those sides together. And the way I put those together is the same exact way. Clamp it to a piece of scrap, as long as it's nice and flat. Tack that out. And as long as both of your sides come out exactly the same touching, uh, that's another indicator that's pretty square. And I'll make sure it's all tacked out real nice and good lay it out, make sure, eyeball it, make sure it looks nice and I'll check it with a tape measure to uh, check for squareness from one corner to the other side and uh, make sure it checks out. After it's all welded out I'll go around and grind all the welds off that I don't want then I'll take my sheet metal and I'll flip it upside down and mark it all out upside down that way it transfers correctly. I'll line up two sides of it, mark the whole thing out, and I'm wanting a 3 8 overlap all the way around, so I double that and get 3 quarters of an inch, and then I'll just measure out from that line that I just drew all around. I'll measure in 3 quarters of an inch and get that scribed all the way around also, and that's going to be my cut line. I then Flip the sheet upside down, clean off every spot where I'm going to be welding. This is with a um, abrasive wheel just to clean everything up, almost like Scotch-Brite. And then I went around and I marked six inches around the entire thing. And then I measured in three-eighths of an inch, made sure it was set all the way around nice and even. So I'm just going to tack it down in the corners first, make sure the sheet's nice and flat all the way around, and then every six inches I come in and put a tack. It's already marked out on this uh, sheet metal, and that's going to be my start and stop. I'm going to be back stepping this whole thing, so six inch increments are pretty good for this 10 gauge steel. Uh, depending on what thickness material you're using, you might want it closer, you might want them further apart, whatever you can get away with. 6 inches on this 10 gauge is good. If it was 14, I would probably put it every 4 or 3 inches. 
So one of the easiest ways to get nice welds is to make sure you're real comfortable as you're moving. So I went ahead and did a bunch of dry runs. I even did some manipulation to make sure my hand wasn't going to get caught on anything or anything stupid like that. And then I'm backstepping this so I'll do one six inch weld, spin the part around. That way it's not hot over here or a spot that's not hot and weld that section out and then just keep spinning around like that and I do it in an order so that each weld is stacking on top of itself. I don't know why this method works but we use it at work with aluminum a lot and it seems to really help and after I got this whole piece welded out it didn't pull or anything so I'm a believer in it. You just gotta do it in order, let everything cool down and then run it all again and stay consistent with it. Just take your time and make sure everything's right. That way you don't have to redo anything and you don't have rushed looking welds. So this is the lap joint technique that I'm using. I'm just basically starting, let it pull up, and then I'll whip forward and slowly move up, and or kind of slowly, move up into the edge and let it flow up and melt that edge off and you'll see it melt. And once it melts down, slowly start looping down and then whip it back up and you just keep doing that swooping motion the whole time and trying to stay consistent and wait for it to melt that edge through and that's how you know to uh, move down and keep going. So what you don't see me doing is each time I make a pass I'm stopping and letting it cool before I come back over it. And I'll show you the final thing when it's all done, but I only got six more welds to do. And the setting that I've settled on is actually one of the standard Synergic settings. It's just, uh, this is 030 wire. So I'm at 173 inches per minute, and I kept the voltage the same. So the voltage is 16.9, and this is, um, 095 wall tubing this is and this is eighth inch and that's the setting that I found that worked really nice for it Done! So I'm wanting this welder to be about right here, you know, so that when I'm rolling it around, I don't have to get down and crunch any numbers, you know? So, I'm thinking I want the very top of it to be at 54, so four and a half feet tall. So I'm gonna take 54. Minus 14 and a half, which gives me 39 and a half. Minus six and a half, which gives me 33 inches is how tall I need the bottom of that next shelf to be, or the top of that next shelf to be. So I decided I wanted the very top of the cart to stick out six inches above that bottom, or the top shelf. 
So I marked this at 39 inches and then I made a quick square with two pieces of scrap and I marked the other one at 9 inches and that's the furthest forward I'm going to be setting this. That way my tank will have some room so that I can fit it in there and if I get a different size it should fit in there also. And then I went around and marked all the spots where it needed to be cut and notched out. And once I had it all marked and the angles that I liked, I went around and made sure that I dialed in all those um, marks. That way I could see them with the zip disc. Then I took my time and used the cutoff wheel to get in there and notch it all out. I test fit that notch, made sure it looked right, and then I cut out the top and made sure everything was good to go. And since it was, I took it over to another piece of metal, lined it up, marked it all out, and then I did the same and cut that one out. Then I set that piece in nine inches and uh, got that lined up. And then I put a flat piece, made sure it was square with the bottom of the cart and used that as my guide on um, where to put that piece. Once I had that and then the cart was square all the way around, I tacked it up. I welded all the outside parts first just to keep it from pulling because no matter what, when you weld a fillet, especially if you're doing this MIG like TIG technique that I like, it pulls. So it's always going to pull to the inside. So the more welds on the outside you can do first, the less it's going to distort towards the inside. And then to get the other piece, I just did the same thing. Flipped it on its side, uh, squared it up, tacked it up, and then I eyeballed it and made sure it was exactly in line with the other one and welded it out. 